Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I was going to take you on a walkthrough of the history curriculum that I have been using with my kids for many years now. I started this curriculum with Josh when he was in the fifth grade and I've just continued it on with Allie Jo and Josh is still using it in his high school years. They break their curriculum up into um, like a middle school grades, like fifth through eighth and then um, the high school curriculum. The wife, Charlene Notgrass, writes the middle school curriculum and the husband, Ray Notgrass, actually writes the history. And I'm going to show you the history curriculum in another video in the near future. Today I'm just going to be focusing on the middle school grades. The middle school grades have America the Beautiful, Uncle Sam and You, and From Adam to Us. The America the Beautiful is obviously American history, Uncle Sam and You is government, and From Adam to Us is world history. I am currently doing the Uncle Sam and You with Allie Jo, so I have America the Beautiful here to do a walkthrough with you and um, show you all the different ways that you can purchase this curriculum. It's broken up into two volumes. So this is your textbook. And the textbook has the lessons laid out for you. Um, it tells you exactly which lesson it is. And then at the end, it gives you the activities that you'll be doing. Also with these books comes another book that just has um, lots of different things in it. Sometimes it's letters. Um, this one has like the Gettysburg Address. There's poetry. There's, um, there's songs and just lots of different things in here to add to the curriculum. You can also get a student workbook or a lesson review, and I will cover that in just a moment. Um, it comes with an answer key, a timeline, and maps. Now I will say not all the curriculums come with timeline and maps. I know that Uncle Sam and you did not come with this. I think the world history does come with this. Um, so, all right, let's just get started and I'll walk you through um, what a typical lesson looks like. Okay, so we're just going to open right up to lesson one in the book. And each week is broken out into um, sections. So this would be week one and it just gives you an overview of what you're going to be doing and it breaks out the lessons in unit one and it tells you which books you're going to be using with Unit 1 Studies. Then you open up to your Lesson 1. You're going to read this with them unless they are a little older and then they can read it to themselves and continue reading. And then at the end, down here at the bottom, it's going to break out all the activities that you will do for Lesson 1. The sections that they have for the activities are Thinking Biblically, Map Study, Literature, Creative Writing, and Student Workbook or Lesson Review, depending on um, the age of your child and which book you purchased. So Thinking Biblically is going to give them a verse that they can look up. This one says, look in your Bible in Genesis 1. In your notebook, make a list numbered 1 through 6. Write beside each number what God made on that day. Next to each item on your list, write one thing that people in America can enjoy that was made on that day of creation. So um, if you don't already do another Bible curriculum, this is a really great way to incorporate in like a daily devotional for your children. Some of these things I do in other um, curriculums. So in years past, there's been years that I've done these, all of these things and then other years that I have broken out pieces and said, okay, we're already covering that, so we're going to skip that. Um, the next section would be map study and this says complete the assignments for lesson one on map one. So in the map book, It just breaks it down. So this says lesson one assignments and they just follow down through here and it tells them exactly what to do. The Atlantic Ocean is east of the United States. Draw blue waves in the Atlantic Ocean. 
So they're just going to follow the directions and color in the map as it tells them to do that. And the book is filled with these. Um, some of the weeks are going to um, be broken out like this one. The entire lesson is this whole page. But in other weeks, you can see here, like lesson nine, lesson 10, lesson 14. So this map, this particular map is going to last for a lot of lessons and they're going to have a small amount that they do each week on this same map. So the next thing in their lesson is literature. So on this section for literature, it's going to tell you to read the introduction and America the Beautiful on page one of We the People. And We the People is in this book, so you just have them bring out their We the People and they're going to go to page one and they're going to read America the Beautiful. And this book is filled with all of these types of things and it's usually a short read, something short that they have to do, um, but it just really adds so much to their lesson. Creative writing. This gives them an opportunity to incorporate their creative writing right into their history curriculum and if you don't already have one then it can be covered um, through their curriculum. So this says, choose one of the animals pictured in the lesson and write a descriptive paragraph about its appearance in your notebook. Title your paragraph, God made blank. Then you're gonna have your student workbook or lesson review. If you're using one of these optional books, complete the assignment for lesson one. <clears throat> So this is the lesson review and this is the student workbook and the student workbook has a lot of different like worksheets in it with different little activities, some crossword puzzles, putting things in order, um, fill in the blank, lots of different fun activities that they can do. I think there might even be some word searches in here. Um, Oh, yep, see there's a word search. So lots of fun activities, but obviously if you're using this curriculum for a seventh or eighth grader, this is probably too mature for them. So that's when you can incorporate in the lesson review. And the lesson review just has questions about the lesson and they just need to go through and answer all of the questions um, about the lesson and you have an answer key. So if they have any questions or if you have any questions, you can um, come into the answer key to find out what exactly the book is looking for. So that's nice. So in this lesson, it did not incorporate in any of the literature, historical fiction, or your timeline. So let's bump ahead and see if we can find one that incorporates that in. Okay, so in this lesson, it tells you for literature, read New England Primer Rhyming Alphabet in We the People, page 18, and chapters nine through 10 in Sign of the Beaver. They incorporate in um, really awesome historical fiction and for America the Beautiful, this is, these are the books that are included. So they're going to be reading The Sign of the Beaver, Amos Fortune Free Man, Brady, Bound for Oregon, Across Five Aprils, Blue Willow, Homer Price, Katie, Little House on the Prairie, and All of a Kind Family. Um, a lot of these books are sunlight books and I know a lot of you have used sunlight through the years and know that their literature is just amazing and you're going to get all of those same awesome historical fiction books incorporated into this curriculum that you do over there. So um, I have been really impressed with the, the choices that um, they have brought in with historical fiction and um, it just adds in that literature um, for your kids and all the while they're learning about history through this literature. I mean, it just doesn't get better than that. 
So in this lesson, it also covers timeline. In Timeline of America the Beautiful, next to 1640, write the Bay Psalm book is printed. It is the first book printed in America. And you just go to your timeline book and find 1640. And they would write that in on their timeline. And it does put some in there for you. And this is such a great um, learning tool because it helps them to place everything in history in that timeline so that they get a better grasp of when things happened and how everything kind of coincides. So this book has made teaching history for me um, so much more interesting and easy to teach because I know that I can wake up each morning, open up this book, and just start teaching history. I don't have to prepare for anything. It's already been prepared for me. And the lessons are not dry. Um, my kids enjoy reading them. They're written well. Um, we just really, really enjoy this curriculum so much. We've learned so much through it. And I know that at the end, it's going to tell my kids exactly what they need to get done. And even if I'm not here, they know exactly what to do and can get started and get their work done. Um, on another note, also, if, if any of you ever pop into one of the homeschool conventions and get an opportunity to meet Charlene Notgrass, oh my goodness, she is such a sweetheart. And you really need to pop over and talk to her for a moment. She is one of the nicest ladies I have ever ever met and I've just really enjoyed reading her blog through the years and um, chatting with her at conventions. She has a heart of gold and it shows through in her curriculum and in the things that she has done. So I highly recommend this curriculum for those of you looking for a great history curriculum that is really pulled together. Um, that isn't super expensive. This is definitely one that you should check out. So that's it for um, my video this week, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.